Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Second MRI, and this is a 62-year-old female with neck pain. She had prior surgery and continues to have neck pain, and so we have three findings here on this uh, picture. This is a side view of the cervical spine. The brain is up high here. This is the spinal cord coming down through the spinal canal, going down into the thoracic region, and this is an x-ray to show what an x-ray looks like as compared to the cervical spine. So just quickly here, we see that the um, vertebral bodies are fused from here to here. This is a block, uh, just one solid block of bone in these little horizontal dark areas. These are screws that are going through this block. And in the front here we see a dark band. This is an anterior fixation plate. And these are the screws. And here we can see this much more clearly on the x-ray. We see the anterior fixation plate, which is really bright. This is metal. And we see these screws going into the vertebral bodies. And you can see what it looks like here darkness metal and these dark screws and so we call this anterior cervical discectomy and fusion so they go in from the front anterior and again they remove the discs and they fuse it into a block here very common surgery and they had a good result wide open spinal canal the openings on the side the foramina are good but what happens when uh, they fuse this there's abnormal motion above and below the fused block and because this can't move, this has to move more than it would normally. And there's too much stress on it, so this is a classic finding. Patients will get a small disc protrusion like this, or sometimes a big disc protrusion or herniation. This is the disc. It's poking out backwards, touching the spinal cord. So a new small disc herniation or protrusion here. This vertebral body is also subluxed or slipped forward a little bit. And this is, again, probably from abnormal stress on this because this is fused and this is probably contributing to their pain. Now down at this low level here, this one has an abnormal stress as well, and if we roll off to one side, there's a hole that looks good, the foramen looks wide open. Here's a facet joint that looks great, but if we roll to the other side, we see that the foramen is narrow, and there's some arthritis in the facet joints. So this patient has a foraminal stenosis and pinching of a nerve here, and this may be um, contributing to their pain. A little disprotrusion here too. And this may be related, again, to abnormal mechanics of stress, resulting in some facet arthritis. Um, and so that's what's going on here in this midsection. Now, there's two other findings, um, and these may be incidental. One of them is this little dark thing here. This linear band is called the dura, and this is the sac, the dural sac that holds the fluid, called the cerebral spinal fluid. It holds it in the spinal canal. The dark band is the spinal cord and all the white stuff behind it and in front of it is the fluid, and this little dark band is uh, growing out of the dura, has a broad association with the dura, it looks like, it's growing off the surface and protruding into the fluid there. And this is almost for sure a small meningioma, which is a benign tumor, comes off the dura, usually has a broad association with the dura like this. It's broader than it is tall. These are more common. And, uh, elderly females, and this looks like a classic appearance. It's a well-defined, small thing with a broad association with the dura like this, dural-based lesion. Now, these can grow larger, and they can compress the spinal cord, so this is something we have to watch carefully, make sure this doesn't grow and compress. Um, and if we gave contrast, this would probably enhance a lot, just like a meningioma would, but right now it looks like this could be just incidental. It's not pushing on the cord, but again, we've got to make sure this does not grow because it could stay the same size for years and one year grow big and push on the cord. And so this is something the neurosurgeon will have to think about how to follow it and what to do. And this is one last finding here. This is the pituitary region. This is called the cella, a little cup up here. And this is the back of the sphenoid sinus. This air, black thing here is air. And this white thing is fluid. And so the fluid space is too large. Normally in the cella, it's smaller than this, better defined, and at the very bottom we see a round ball called the pituitary gland that would be dark. Instead, we don't see the pituitary gland at all, and all we see is this fluid pocket that's a little bit too big. And so the question is, did the patient have a pituitary tumor that they, that they resected, and now this is filled with fluid, and the pituitary gland has been resected? Could there be some cystic area here, like a pituitary cyst, or does the patient have elevated intracranial pressure, too much pressure in the, in the brain, and that fluid can push down, push down on the pituitary gland, and maybe the pituitary gland is here,
it was just pushed down and flattened and compressed, like jackhammered down over the years. And it looks like it's not there, and we call that a partially empty cella. It looks like it's empty, but in fact, the pituitary gland may be there. We just don't see it because it's so flattened and compressed. And again, that's from elevated intracranial pressure, and we call that pseudotumor cerebri, if that's the case. So we're going to have to look at old films and find out if this patient's had a prior pituitary resection or if they have clinical symptoms that go along with pseudotumor cerebri, or if there's anything else associated with this. But that's it. So three findings, abnormal appearance of the cella tersica in, in absence of the pituitary gland or non-visualization. We have disc herniation here, probably related to abnormal mechanics of stress, and also foraminal stenosis here, facet arthritis. And the third finding is a small benign meningioma here that we have to watch. Thank you very much.